Welcome back to Archer's World of Literature. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be doing my first writing, reading, coffee, exploring Melbourne vlog. Um, and today I'm very lucky to be joined by one of my most recent, but also a very close friend of mine, Mr. R.C. Walden, who I'm sure you've all heard of before. Um, he's going to be joining me on this adventure and we can see what mischief we're going to get off to, uh, get up to. So. Off we go to meet Robin. Les gens s'y sont vraiment ouverts. Just get that for the B-roll. Roll. The, the French. Roll. Ah, oh, you look like a tourist. Uh, through and through. Are you a fella here? Yeah, I'm actually just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I study here. Are study you a, what? Are uh, you a fella here? Je suis assoud. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do you say that? He is an assoud. <laughs> How do you say that in French? He is an asshole. Huh? How do you say it in French? He's an asshole. Il est... Il est... Il est... Un asshole. Il est un asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Je suis okay. asshole. Je suis asshole. I am asshole. Okay, this is staying in. What? That's, stay, that's staying in for sure. Not the asshole. Okay. Yeah, that's staying in. And just wait for Gatto. Just wait for Gatto together. If you know, you know. You know. He never showed up. You did. You didn't. Spoiler, it's been a week. It's been a week. He never showed up. Alright, I'm cutting that. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just here at Melbourne Uni. Uh, I study here. No, I don't. Do I'm, you now? No. no book. Hold up. Do. I'm an imposter. I don't go here, but I'm here to see. Got this uh, sweater going on. Of course you go. People think so. Yeah. Um, I'm here to see Robin. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm currently reading. Albert Camus, The Myth of Sisyphus. Camus. Now, Robin here speaks French, so if I fuck that up, 
I fucked that up. Um, yeah, so this is his philosophical essays on kind of life and death and the absurdity of whether life's really worth living. But uh, from what I'm getting compared to other existentialists, um, he kind of, he's kind of like, yeah, it's, it, there's no point. Um, but there's like a little bit, there's hope. You can kind of just enjoy knowing that there's no point. So don't read this if you're depressed, but it's cool. Yeah, I like it. And then I just got my notebook here, like my observations get put in here. So we we're going to go and get some notes. coffee or something. Huh? We should compare notes when we're We should we're compare sitting. notes. Let's go to Ligon. Let's go to Ligon. Yeah. We're going to go to readings. Let's do it. Robin, where are we? This is Readings, Colton. What's Readings? Um, it's like like my favorite bookstore, but also my money pit. It's my money pit? once I walk in there, it's like yeah. 100 bucks out of my bank account. Yep, all right. It's kind of a tragedy. Let's go in. I don't do that today. All right, let's see. Let's head on in. Pick one up straight away. <laughs> Come on, uh, do something. No, I'm too. I'm trying to look for Beckett. I'm searching for Beckett. Come, this is this is boring content. People say move. People say go F. He said go F. What is it? Is you, you said golf. He said golf. It's Gert. It's Gert. Yay. Gagne. <laughs> no, it's got yay. Oh, got yay? Now you're just somebody that I used to know. Measure for measure. Hey. Our favorite Willy. <laughs> oh, what section are we in? Is this. Do they have Titus Drums? Is this plays? Yeah, yeah. it's plays. I don't think they have. Um... This is illegal. This is, this is illegal. Why? I want it. Buy it. But I don't have money for it. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I'm like... No, now. prove to the audience this is your money pool. You said it. Put it in, put your words into action. I bought this yesterday, and I just still haven't finished reading it. No, but we didn't see you buy it, so we don't... You could, you could have stolen it, like, for a while. <laughs> I bought it from Demix. So. Oh, um, Am I going to get kicked? Got that. <laughs> Well, that's, that's my aim of this video. To reveal? Re no, reveal what you actually are. You, you're revealing me? Our whole universe has seen a hot damn state in nearly 14 billion years ago. The expansion started. <laughs> oh, that's going in. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, we're just chilling here on the balcony. Do you know what this place is called? Very existential. Oh, yeah. Eating out of a gutter. That's pretty absurd, actually. I'm digging that. No, nothing. Do you reckon that bird, like, thinks there's any point to what it's doing? I don't think so. Do you reckon that bird has, like, an idea of, like, existentialism or... He just or... wants to eat. <laughs> yeah. That's his idea of existentialism. That pretty much is following, like, Camus a little things. bit. Yeah. Well, it's, well, it's kind of like... Well, whatever its gender is, it's just kind of like, it's just doing. It's being. Yeah, it's being. Like being enough. Yeah, but it knows it's gonna die. What, does that mean that it's probably more like Nietzsche's? It's not even waiting for anything. <laughs> I wonder if it's waiting for anyone. Waiting for another world. Waiting for God. God is dead. Why? But we can't. <laughs> Why? Because we're waiting for God. Dude, oh Dude. my God. Yeah, but like, you pull out like a random philosophy book, you're just kind of like, people are like, there's a high barrier of entry to philosophy, mm. but I personally don't agree with it. Because what you're going to realize is that over and over and over again, these, these people are still reaching the same, grappling at the same questions. They're yeah. And like, what is metaphysics? What's reality? How do we conceptualize it? And then... It's almost like it's a language. It's just like, you'll just get it the more you yeah. try. No, no. In fact, like, late 20th century philosophy, it's all about exposing the absurdity of this philosophical language. Um, yeah. Literally. And then, like, the works of Derrida or, like, Semu Beckett, um, that's why they go hand in hand, Derrida yeah. and Beckett. Um, Even Camus was like talking about that when he's like, 
um, mm. talking about like, oh, you know, you can write about like all these things and all this crazy stuff about life, but then yeah. like if you break it all down, it's just like there is no point to life. But yeah, just being happy with he kind of talks about like just being happy with knowing that there's no point in life. Yeah, but just just being happy. But I found this really good analogy, which is on when you read enough philosophy, what you're going to realize is like. We're tackling fundamentally just three categories of questions. Mm. So metaphysics, mm. why do things exist or how do they exist? Mm -hmm. You're talking about ethics, how do we be good people in the world? That's a very important part of philosophy. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking about epistemology. How do we know anything? Yeah. Right? Those are just three big questions of philosophy. Mm. And from those places, like just all sorts of crazy stuff starting yeah. to stem out. And then because epistemology directly relates to science. Yeah, exactly. And then science is like a whole can of worms. So, um, before you get into it, you just kind of have to treat yourself like a kid again. Mm. It's kind of like when you were a kid, you're just kind of, why the fuck is the sky blue? Mm. And then in modern philosophical language, it's literally, you're dealing with perception, you're dealing with phenomenology, you're dealing with um, epistemology. Why do we call blue blue? How, how do we know that? Is it, from an empiricist point of view or is there something in our brains that's like okay that's that's a color yeah. we have some faculty <clears throat> in our brains that's like when we see a color we know it's a color so that just opens up the can of worms it's yeah. like how do we know anything for certain that's, that's epistemology so, but um so so why why is a tree called a tree and as a kid I had a question why can't we just call the door like my ear you know yeah. I opened up the ear yeah instead of calling it I opened up the door I mean that links to like language as well and that's that's basically like semiotics yeah how the languages take on meaning so if you just boil down all the stupid questions like a three year three year old asks that's philosophy so I had a realization so in order to be happy one literally has to disappear into reality yeah so that that's the Zen sort of um that's sort of like the Buddhist idea of transcending suffering mm. because you realize suffering is just a reoccurring theme of like you trapping yourself in like a little self-referential bubble and that's yeah. a strange loop you know so the thing is it's like it's yeah. a, you're never you're never gonna no matter how much you write plus philosophically it's like you're never gonna escape suffering mm. never ever yeah. well, why is philosophy so dialectical it's like one asshole proposes something and then <laughs> someone's like I don't agree with this yeah and then that person turns into, turns into like the anti blah blah blah. You know, someone yeah, proposes anti, yeah. blah, blah blah. I'm the anti blah blah blah. Just and then someone they can, yeah. someone opposes that. It's an anti anti blah blah blah. So you have this like dialectical thesis and thesis and synthesis. Anti, synthesis. anti blah, blah blah. And then like Hegel was like, it's going to move us towards like some ultimate spirit. Yeah. But then like, that's a modernist sort of like ramification. We're still reaching somewhere. So that my my job is the theory of kind of like education. Why do we get educated at all? Why is education yeah. so important? How do we get people on board with education without boring them to death? What's wrong with the education system? It's, just, it's pushing a lot of people away. It's like, it's yeah. the same thing with education and philosophy. It's like, mm. different methods are going to work for different people, just Completely. like, of, it, of learning, just mm. like how um, a different mentality of philosophy totally, is going to, like, yeah. kill someone, but make someone else happy. Yeah. That's why philosophy is, like, it, it poses, like, eternal conversation, but it's, like, a lot of it is, it's, like, dangerous. Like, you can get, like, caught up in it so crazy. Words are load of pistols, you know? Yeah. Jean-Paul Sartre said that. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, that's why I'm enjoying getting into it more and more, though, because... But do I'd... be careful. When yeah. you when you go in Looney Tunes, you just call me. Robin. Yeah. Robin, this is your fault. Yeah. I'm just, like, crying at <laughs> philosophy. Like... The philosophy is making me Looney Tune. <laughs> Don't no, saying speak up. <laughs> speak up. Cra crazy. You know, there's a lot of work and it's crazy. Yeah, but it's nuts. We're nuts people. Yeah. We got a chai latte. Which looks like we a pile of shit. It is a pile of shit. That's what happened when I finished the latte. Um, 
We've got Camus. We've got some of Roald Dahl's uh, adult books, I suppose. <laughs> We've got uh, the Seamus Nini. We've got the personal notes, which you guys are not allowed to see. It's mine. It's mine. It's yours. Intellectual property. Yeah. We're on Little Flinders Lane and we're at Roulette. How do you say uh, Roulette Galette in French? Roulette. 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 Yeah. That's where we're at. And we're just about to do some silent reading while Robin does his citations. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.